What's up everyone, how's it going? This is Waj. Hope you guys are all doing well. And this is going to be a follow-up video for our 6800K review that we did a couple of weeks ago. I promised that we would actually do a comparison between the 6800K and the Intel 6700K because I'm sure for most people, these are the two processors that they're going to be kind of interested in because the price bracket is kind of similar and they're going to be uh, really powerful when it comes to gaming and some productivity-based applications. Now, essentially we're comparing the high-end spectrum of the Skylake of architecture with the 6700K and at the bottom end of the spectrum when it comes to the new Broadwell e-chips with the 6800K. Obviously there's going to be a different chipset for each of these so we want to give a big thank you for Gigabyte for supplying the motherboards for all of our testing. Uh, we're using the X99 Designer EX for the 6800K and the Z170X Designer board for our 6700K. Both of these motherboards are pretty darn remarkable when it comes to build quality and features including things like full usb 3.1 and usb type c integration as well as uh, pcie gen 3 at 4x for all of your u.2 and m.2 ssds as well as having full led rgb lighting integration all around the board so you can custom configure a color scheme that would match with your uh, rig or pc configuration so pretty darn remarkable motherboards check out the links in the description for more detail now now we're going to be testing out the processors in their overclock configuration. So we're going to be using the CM Master Liquid Pro 240 millimeter radiator configuration. So this is a nice all-in-one liquid cooling solution that's going to give us the performance we need to really push the processors to their max while maintaining a pretty stable temperatures. Now in terms of the overclock, the 6700K is set to 4.7 gigahertz and we've upped the voltage to 1.3 volts. This 6800K, we can't overclock quite as much being a six core CPU. So we're going to set it to 4.5 gigahertz. And in order to maintain a stability, we're going to set the voltage to around 1.4 volts. Now, after about uh, 40 minutes of Prime 95 at 100% load, here are our temperature readouts. Again, we're using the same exact uh, cooler on both platforms. So as you can see, the thermal performance is uh, decently good on both platforms, but because we have the 6800K set a little bit higher in terms of voltage that's definitely going to result in higher overall temperatures and uh, for long-term stability we need to keep the voltage at this if we want to maintain that 4.5 gigahertz overclock now keep in mind that the thermal performance and the overclocking capabilities will always fluctuate and vary so this is all based on the current chip samples that i have right now now in terms of wattage uh, same thing at max a cpu load with no gpu load the entire system draws about 168 watts on the 6700k and the system for the 6800K draws about 173 watts. So not a big difference in terms of overall uh, wattage and power consumption over here. Now in terms of the uh, raw CPU benchmark results uh, based on our overclock settings on the Cinebench R15 benchmark, we're getting about 1055 on the 6700K and a 1361 points on our 6800K. So uh, definitely with more threads and more cores, you are going to get better overall performance. That's pretty obvious there. Same result kind of goes for the Geekbench 3 result when you take a look at the multi-core performance. But from a uh, single core uh, perspective, the 6700K is definitely quite a bit faster as you see from the results over here. Now in terms of productivity and media creation related tasks, uh, based on our After Effects render test, we got uh, quite a bit uh, big difference between these two processors. As you can see, our project rendered out quite a bit faster at around 49 seconds on the 68. 800k versus it took about one minute eight seconds on the 6700k same thing when going to exporting a 4k video on a premiere pro so it only took about two minutes 18 seconds on our six core versus on the quad core it took about uh, two minutes 52 seconds now in terms of gaming based on our performance with the gtx 980 ti on uh, 3d mark fire strike extreme we got a slight difference in terms of overall score we got about about 8,300 points on our 6,800K versus about uh, just under 8,000 points with our 6,700K. Of course, our graphics score is uh, very similar. It uh, really comes down to the physics score that makes the difference between the six and the quad core. Moving on, taking a look at the uh, synthetic benchmark results for Grand Theft Auto 5, you can see that there's really not a big difference between uh, these two processors when it comes to gaming, both at 1080p and even at 4K. 4K, you're getting a couple more frames per second on 
average a little bit extra with the 6800k but nothing really to brag about same thing kind of goes with uh, playing a uh, crisis 3 you can see that there's a uh, barely any a uh, difference between these two processor when it comes to this particular title and again the results are further mirrored by uh, the grid autosports are uh, pretty much maxed out settings you're only getting about two or three uh, more uh, fps on our 6800k compared to the 6700k on average generally speaking in a lot of cases they're going to be pretty much around the same performance level when it comes to gaming so if you're going to be buying the uh, 6800k for gaming it's definitely uh, not worth it. Probably save your money and get the 6700K or uh, perhaps even a lower end processor because in a lot of cases you don't need uh, that many cores because uh, the games currently right now are not going to utilize the full potential of all those cores. That being said, if you, of course you're going to do a lot more productivity related tasks, the more cores that you have, the generally faster performance that you're going to get as uh, you witness from our particular performance results. But really other than that guys, that's really it. Hopefully Hopefully this gives you kind of a good idea in terms of what the core differences are between these two processors when it comes to the overclocking perspective and performance. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Check out the description for more detailed information about everything we talked about. And thanks again for your support. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later. Take care.